Hi, and welcome to the Intravenous IV Access Review. My name is Pete Morissuti. I am a regional paramedic educator for the Southwest Ontario Regional Base Hospital Program. Upon completion of this online training module, the paramedic should be able to summarize the indications, conditions, and contraindications for the use of an IV and administration of fluid. They should also be able to demonstrate the ability to correctly apply the intravenous and fluid therapy medical directive to a variety of clinical situations. Also, they should be also able to summarize the techniques for successfully obtaining an IV for patients who have difficult IV access. IV access is an effective alternative to administer medications as compared with IM injections. It is a skill that does require additional training and practice to become proficient. IV insertion does have some post challenges, however. If the IV is not properly inserted, fluid and or medication might infuse into surrounding tissue. Depending on the substance that has been infused and subsequently become interstitial, it may cause irreversible tissue damage. IV access needs to be continuously monitored. Fluid overload can result if pro not properly monitored. In the cardiac arrest patient, medications administered from a peripheral vein require one to two minutes to reach a central circulation. Veins may be difficult to palpate due to vascular collapse and or vasoconstriction. In the combative patient, there is always a risk to the paramedic at any given time. When IV access is added to this environment, it compounds the danger for everyone involved. Inadvertent needle sticks could result when trying to obtain IV access. In pediatric patients, as well as having anxiety and fear not only of a stranger in the presence of the pediatric patient, there also is the anxiety and fear of needles involved. Sometimes this is one to two person job in order to obtain the access. As a result of obtaining IV access, there are some additional complications which include pain and irritation, cellulitis, phlebitis, thrombosis, bleeding, hematoma formation, venous spasm, inadvertent arterial puncture, nerve, tendon, ligament and or limb damage, infiltration, and extravasation. What is the indication for use of an IV? It is the actual or potential need for intravenous medication or fluid therapy. The contraindications for use? The suspected fracture proximal to the access site. What is equipment is involved? Well, you require gloves, IV catheter, IV fluid, IV administration set, alcohol wipe, tourniquet, tape, gauze, tegaderm, syringe, and a sharps container to contain the biohazards. Assessing for difficulties in the intravenous access is the inability to properly landmark the IV insertion site, amputations, shunts and fistulas, the corpulent patient, previous venous punctures proximal to the cannulation sites, hemodynamically compromised patients, as well as infection to the areas for possible access. Please refer to the following video on how to properly insert the intravenous catheter. Thank you and have a good day. Good day everyone. Welcome to the SWAR procedural skills video on IV cannulation. My name is Samir Mall and I'm an EMS resident with SWAR. And I'm Steffi Romano, one of your regional paramedic educators. So during this video we'll be taking you through the uh, stepwise approach to the proper and safe uh, technique for insertion of an IV catheter. 
So like the skill that we teach here at SWAR, preparation is the key, and you want to make sure you have all your equipment out and ready at the beginning of your procedure. So first step in this case, I'm going to have a look at my solution. I have normal saline, a 250 ml bag, and I want to make sure that the expiration date is good, that there's no condensation on the outside of the bag, and no particulate matter on the inside of the bag. I'm also going to grab my appropriate drip set, and I'm going to prime the bag here. So the first step, like uh, Stephanie just said, is priming your IV tubing where, where essentially you're just uh, filling the air that currently is inside the tubing with saline solution so you don't introduce air into the vein. So inspecting your bag and priming the line, you want to squeeze the drip chamber so that it fills about halfway with the normal saline and open up my line to make sure that I don't have any air in the line at all. So a technique here that some people like to use is to flick the line to move the bubbles along. So once that's done, I'm going to close the line off again and re-tighten my cap. So now we have our IV tubing ready, now we can prep the patient. So before you even uh, prep the patient, make sure you have a look at both hands, both arms, and select the most appropriate site. So in this case I have the patient's right arm and I'm going to uh, sterilize the area or cleanse the area with an alcohol swab in a circular motion approximately two inches in diameter. So you want to make sure you let that area dry uh, and make sure not to blow on the area at all. And so while that's happening, I'm going to prep the rest of my equipment and apply the tourniquet. So you select an appropriate size catheter for the indication that you're inserting the IV cannula for. And here you can see Steph applying the tourniquet uh, a few inches proximal to the site where she'll be aiming with her IV catheter. Some people also like to use a blood pressure cuff as a tourniquet, which is also fine. I'm going to prep my tegaderm here, and I also have a few pieces of tape ready to go. So I'm going to take my catheter, I have an 18 gauge, and again, I'm going to prime the catheter tip over the needle to make sure it slides nicely. Reach down to the patient, reassess the vein itself, and anchor the hand so that the vein does not roll. Now, I like to go into the vein uh, at a fairly horizontal uh, degree, I guess. Um, Samir, I don't know if you like to go in on an angle, but I know that some paramedics do. There are different techniques, and that's whatever you become comfortable with. Uh, I, I prefer to use the method that Stephanie's doing, uh, just to avoid going through the vein since they aren't that large in diameter. I find also when you go in horizontally, uh, you can use your other fingers to anchor yourself on the patient's hand. And so once you enter the vein and feel uh, a little bit of a pop, you go ahead and advance the catheter itself a few millimeters and then advance the entire needle itself. So what Steph did there was she advanced the catheter just past the tip of the needle when she was in the vein so that when she advances the entire unit, the tip of the needle doesn't puncture through the wall of the, of the vein. Next step, I'm going to occlude the vessel proximal to the site and remove the needle itself. Remembering that I'm a sharp out right now and discarding in a sharp container. attach my IV tubing and then release the tourniquet. And at this point I'm going to open up the line and make sure that I don't have any swelling. And I don't, so then I'm going to attach my tegaderm and secure with tape. So what kind of complications might arise from uh, an IV that's not or potentially gone interstitial, Samir? So if, if an IV is interstitial, there's, there's a few signs that you can look for right away. Uh, the most obvious one would be you won't get good uh, drip out of the bag uh, because of the increased resistance in the tissues versus the vein. And the other thing that Steph mentioned is you'll often see uh, soft tissue swelling around the area of the IV uh, catheter, which indicates that the fluid is going into the uh, soft tissues and not into the vein itself. Good, and one other point that I forgot to mention as I inserted the, the catheter is to make sure that you're looking for flashback. So as soon as, you, as soon as you've entered the vein, you will see blood in the flash catheter, or the flashback um, area of the catheter. Uh, and at that point, you can proceed to, uh, to further insert the catheter. So here, Steph, uh, you know, once you, you've done this great procedure, you want to make sure that you don't lose it now. So Steph secured that really well with the tegaderm. She's also looped the IV tubing around the finger uh, to uh, prevent uh, anyone from pulling, uh, pulling on it and then secured it with multiple pieces of tape. So now our IV is up and running and good to go.
So that's it for the procedural video on ivy cannulation. If you have any questions, please feel free to submit them through our website, and we look forward to seeing you at our recertification day.